Hey, what's up? Today we're going to take a look at repairing a uh, Coleman Camper fridge. Uh, these fridges work on uh, three ways. They work on AC, DC, and propane. Um, so uh, what a lot of people tend to notice is that the uh, it gets cold off, the fridge gets cold enough on electric and it gets cold enough on uh, DC when you use it on a battery but um, when you put it on propane sometimes it, it it doesn't get cold enough when it used to so what that usually means is that all your components of your fridge are okay but uh, there's there's something stopping the fridge from getting hot enough and so oftentimes that can be a blockage in the propane somewhere uh, there's often little bugs or spiders or things that like to spin webs right in the propane so uh, I'm no expert at this sort of stuff but I just found these things on the internet and um, these the last video I posted about running the fridge seemed to be really popular. So I'm going to be uh, demonstrating on a Coleman uh, Fleetwood Tacoma, but um, these propane fridges don't tend to change much uh, in many, many years. Uh, a couple of things you might need is a, a can of compressed air and possibly some uh, alcohol or something to clean out uh, some of the, the components. So I'm just going to start by finding the fridge panel here and opening it up turns, it just pulls out, and uh, hope you can see that there, we've got, um, it's on AC power right now, so I'm going to turn that off, turn off all my powers, make sure it's unplugged, uh, and uh, no gas coming through right now. Um, this here is where you tend to run into trouble, The uh, these lines can get kind of clogged up. Also, sometimes there can be blockages in the, in the sort of chimney structure here. So we're just going to uh, take this apart, blow it all out, uh, maybe s soak some of the parts in alcohol, and, uh, and we'll go from there. So I'm just going to start by, um, there's a piece of wood here that's underneath, and uh, there's usually a couple screws that hold this in. Just remove those screws. I've already done that, so I'm just pull this out. And that lets you push down on that a bit and gives you a bit of wiggle room for all these other components here. So this part, we just need to remove this housing here. That's where the flame usually goes. And there's a, a little screw here over here. So we'll just get that. Let's see. Yeah, we're gonna get right in there and uh, take out that screw so we can remove this housing here. Another screw there. Two screws here, screw here. This whole thing should slide off the end and come out and we can go from there. I took out the screws here, uh, here and here. And I just knocked off the little connector there and I'm gonna remove this uh, little box guy here. Just give it a wiggle. Push down on this since I removed this board. That's gonna make that easier. You. Oh, one more screw. I, I forgot this guy here. Have I? Yeah, I definitely need to remove that guy. Okay. Go and just slide that sort of out that way. That screw back there. Okay. So let's see if we can get a better view here. So what we have here is this is the lighter here. Uh, this is connected to the thing that makes the spark right there guy here and this is what we affectionately call as the crack pipe and there's a little hole there and you can see the back of what we call the aperture cup in there and in this is kind of like the 
area in which a lot of stuff tends to build up and you can see that um, it's got let's see if I can zoom in here a bit it's gotten kind of charred with all the, the heat and stuff and you get a lot of matter so um, every chance you get along the step of the, the way here uh, it's good just to blow things out as much as you can in fact here if I look at my look at this it's full of residue so I'm gonna blow everything out Um, now we're going to try taking some of these bits off here. I believe this should just pop off. Yeah, that part just pops off there. It's just, just the, the electric part to the, uh, to the starter. That just pulls right off of there. No problem. So now I'm going to remove this screw here and then hopefully take this out and then uh, get the crack pipe, so to speak, out of there. You gotta be really careful. This aperture cup that's in here is quite loose. So we gotta be careful with that. We gotta clean it very carefully. So, one of the big telltale signs is that you may have uh, an orange flame instead of a blue flame uh, when you look in the little window. So, when this is on and you're opening this up and you look inside and say the flame is orange, then uh, you're probably not getting enough gas through or something's blocking you here. If the flame uh, is blue, then, I mean, it still might be cluttered with debris or something like that. I've also had a friend who had something uh, blocking in the chimney here and he had to take that to the, the actual um, place for service for that. I right, so I've um, blown out everything I can. I've given everything a good old clean. Oops, sorry about that. I've uh, I've been using the, uh, the compressed air. I yeah, had a little bottle brush as well to get all the components and just try to get it as clean as I possibly can. Uh, next step is I'm going to remove um, this, the crack pipe part here. There's a bolt here and I really have to watch. On the other end of that is the aperture cup. You do not want to lose that. I'm going to be using a 7 16 wrench right here and just by untwisting that this will come off. The aperture cup is just on the end of that bolt there. We'll give it a good blowout and uh, and give it a, a good clean and uh, put it all back together again. And uh, by all accounts, uh, many internet reports say that'll fix 90% uh, of your problems. There's the aperture cup of which I've been talking about. Uh, whatever you do, don't remote that hole. It's uh, very custom. So here we go. And uh, yeah, we managed to remove. So we managed to remove this from the uh, from the pipe here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to give this a good old blowout again. Uh, where's my doodah? Here we go. Seems pretty clean to me.
And uh, like I said, the uh, little aperture cup is there that sits right on the end of this bad boy, right there. And uh, you can't see that, can you? Right on the end of this here just sits on there in there so you gotta be careful with it this is a custom it's precision made and uh, that little hole regulates how much uh, gas is getting through so you gotta be really careful with that and uh, you can clean this up with a little bit of alcohol but uh, yeah, don't like ream it out or anything okay so I'm gonna clean this aperture cup take some q-tips some of our uh, alcohol here. Give it a good clean. Go clean as a whistle. Some of our other bits here. Do the same treatment. Okay, so after we've cleaned as much as we can, um, we've used all our tools we can. You can get uh, pipe cleaners if you want and get right in uh, here. This is a Q-tip, obviously, but pipe cleaners are Q-tips. Soak them in the alcohol. Get right in there. Get everything all cleaned out. And like I said, this tends to clean up, uh, fix up most of the problems. So it's time to put it all back together again. Oh, nearly lost my aperture cup there. So, first thing, first thing. Okay, so I reconnected this uh, with the aperture cup on the end right there. Uh, so that's just been put in and I just slid it into there. Just put that on with the standard Phillips screw back on in the washer. That's on. You gotta make sure this is level as well. If it's not burning level, you're not gonna get as hot as you, as you want to be. And it's all about getting hot out here so that it gets cold in the fridge. Slide the uh, electric start back on there. Mine's looking pretty manky, but it should still do what it needs to do. We're hoping. Man, that looks really bad. Okay, and uh, now it's just a case of putting the cover back on.
All right, tonight I'm gonna come and light this and uh, we'll see if we're doing any better. Uh, it's good if you have like a, a thermometer, so uh, it's hard to tell how the fridge is doing. So get a thermometer, get a digital thermometer if you can. And uh, like a meat thermometer is a good thing. And, uh, and then you can see what's going on in that fridge. All right, 